Okay, it's uh, time to call this meeting to order. Uh, let's start out with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, one nation. indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next item on the agenda is uh, approval of the minutes from our June 17th meeting. Entertain a motion to approve those minutes. I would make a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Roberta, second. Okay. Who's the, who's the first? Roy? Okay. Roy. Okay. Is there any uh, uh, corrections needed? Seeing none, all those in favor of the minutes, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Oh, there's anybody opposed? <laughs> Motion passes. Uh, items for discussion and possible action. Item 3.1 is discussion and possible action on the consideration of extending the life of TID 18, the district known as the South Point Enterprise Campus. I'll turn it over to Chad Pelichek, our city planner, for a report on this item. Thank you. So before we begin, Roberta, before this meeting, I sent out an email with the attachments that I'm uh, going to be referring to. I don't know, Roy and Roberta, if you guys can look at those. It might help in the discussion. If not, um, so what we're looking at today is TID 18. So you'll recall that we created TID 18 back in 2018 for the development of the South Point Enterprise Campus, the city's new business park on the south side of Sheboygan. Um, when we originally put together the development assumptions and the performa for that district, we had anticipated that we were gonna, one, have new development from the FedEx, which we have, in, and I'll talk about that shortly, and that we had some potentials <coughs> for a $6 million project and a $2 million project, and then selling land at 50,000 an acre for interior parcels and $100,000 an acre for uh, I-43 <coughs> parcels. Um, since that time, the, the FedEx project in, in the first sheet that I handed out on page one, you can see under the actual column, the 3,995,000, 3, that's uh, partial of the FedEx and the 3,704,000 is the other one. So the total project is right around 4.7 million. Um, that we had anticipated that that's what the uh, development assumption was gonna be and that was gonna be new revenue. Um, we did not um, successfully get the $8 million project that was gonna be constructed in 2019 and be available for taxing in 2020. And then Van Horn was going to build a dealership, um, Van Horn deal Van Hyundai dealership that they built on the property next to the current dealership out there in the town that was originally gonna be built on the city's property for another 2 million of value. So what we had to do is push out the um, projects and we are, right now we had anticipated a potential project of 5.5 million, which is a couple of projects that are proposing to happen, although we haven't actually got offers yet. And then we're working on a warehouse development um, in 2022 that for the 8 million that may um, create some additional increment. And then what we looked at was the value of land. So uh, when our neighbors to the south in the city of uh, village of Oostburg is giving away land for free and our neighbors to the west in Falls are giving away land for free, it's hard to remain competitive at 50,000 and $100,000 an acre. So um, this performa puts it at $25,000 an acre when we believe it's probably gonna be less than that uh, to do so. So um, the development of this site has substantially changed. When you look at the uh, next page in this packet, page two, it runs through uh, the TIF increment projections. And I'm sorry, the 
page three is very small. For those of you that I printed copies, I should have printed it the other way. But in essence, basically what we're talking about is the fact that um, we've got roughly $15 million of investment in outstanding loans that have to be paid back. And when we look at the development assumptions and the re revisions to the, um, uh, the cost per land, it pushes us out to paying that back to the end of the district, which is 2039. So what we're here to talk about today is whether the Joint Review Board would allow for us to project for a three-year extension. So under um, state law, the Joint Review Board has to basically approve a resolution that uh, they would, if it was needed, and, and once we got to 2039, we would be able to exercise the extension for another three years of the district um, by state law, by state statute, we get the three years. Uh, then we would take it not knowing where we're going and not knowing how long COVID is gonna take. And we've got some permanent financing to get in order yet. Um, we just think it's uncertain terms to not uh, project a, you know, that we're gonna need this extension. Um, and it'll actually look better on our Moody's rating calls if we uh, have a few more years to recoup some revenues. So the idea here would be to uh, obtain approval from you guys or entertain an option to give the city the authority to extend this district for another three years to hopefully, uh, if we need it, to hopefully recapture some of the revenues that we anticipated were gonna be coming in in the first couple of years and probably aren't going to be uh, particularly because COVID hit right when we were ramping up. So that's kind of it in a nutshell and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Chad. Any questions for Chad? Uh, I could, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, go, go ahead. Are there other districts that have been extended and what is the projection on all of the districts going forward? Uh, uh, overall financial picture, I guess is what I'm looking for. <clears throat> So to answer that question, um, the overall financial, I mean, most of our districts are, are doing well. Um, you know, this is the only district that we have that's created as an industrial district, which doesn't give us any flexibility to share between districts because um, you can only share with like districts. So the, the challenge we have is given that this is created as an industrial, it is what it is and it's gotta kinda stand on its own. Um, we have just closed out TID 11, which will be making payments back to the county that roughly $500,000. The rest of the districts, we've got TID 6 that's closing in a few years. Um, I mean, most of the districts, except for the ones that have started recently, like the couple we've created in the, that have some debt on them, the majority of them, all in all, are doing well. Thank you. Uh, Todd Wolf, our administrator, you have a question? Or uh, comment? It's more of a comment. Um, <clears throat> one of the reasons why we are looking at the three-year extension is that it was actually recommended to us. Typically, um, an industrial park has a, a, a long life of a, around 20 years to actually you know, develop, build, and close. And because of the fact that we're, we've had this pandemic situation, and not to blame everything on a pandemic, but if you think about it, we actually had some really good growth opportunities really set the table for us and we had very high expectations and that's why we took out the, 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 the three-year NAN, if you, if you remember back. The three-year extension is really being requested because it fills the gap and the void that we're, we're gonna have because of the COVID situation. There are opp opportunities that are out there, but when we talk with the developers, they're really kind of just putting things on hold. They're not saying that they're not doing it. They're just saying right now because of the uncertain times we need to hold. The problem is we really need to continue to extend our TID. The life of it doesn't mean that we're, we're gonna necessarily use it, and correct me if I'm wrong, Chad. It's an extension, but when the, we can still close prior. So what we're asking is because of the situation, it's better to ask for the three years extension now because of the COVID versus coming back in say 10, 12 years and say, I wish we would have asked for the three year extension. So we, right now we can, we can justify it, we understand it, we agree with it, and if we need it, we'll have it, and if we don't need it, we let it go. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
And if I may, Mr. Yeah, Chair, I think ahead. it really, to that point of what the administrator said, it really ties into the city's future bonding um, re revenues and looking at these districts and whether they're going to be cash, you know, be able to cash flow themselves. So it, it, it's to kind of line ourselves up as we go to Moody's and the bond market for other bonding for capital improvements and those things to show that in the financial picture, we do have a few years should we need it. Now, what I would say is we can't predict where we are going to be in 20 years, but, you know, we, TID 3 was created to create the current <coughs> business park. Um, around Weeding Creek Road. We closed that district two years early and paid the taxing jurisdictions back a couple hundred thousand dollars as well. So, you know, we've got a track record that it'll be successful. It's just that we've got some, we've been hit with some, you know, unstable times and not to say that over 20 years we're not going to have that as well, but just giving us the uh, statute amount of three years, at least we know we have those three years to try to get this thing cash flowing if it should, you know, need it as we move along. Yeah, are there any other questions or discussion? I have a question. Please go ahead, Roberta. Um, to, to recap, you, you talked about FedEx and a couple of other potential businesses that would go into that park. Just, just an overview. Is FedEx still alive, but not quite for so much? And are the other couple of prospects still alive or no? FedEx is done. So the total, ta we had estimated eight and a half million originally. The total tax rate, uh, total tax assessment right now is right around 7.7, 7.8 .7, million. So we were, you know, okay. roughly 500,000 or so off on that, which isn't the worst. Um, we had anticipated another 14 million of new investment plus some land sales that would have given us additional increment. Those projects did not move forward. So the projects that you see on the, that I talked about, the potential projects in the warehouse are still in discussions. At this point, we've met with the developers a number of times, but we do not have a agreement with them that it's actually moving forward. Okay. I'm I'm in agreement to to ex extend. I think that just makes good financial sense, um, given that the uptake was slow because of the COVID. So I I'd be in favor of extending, should we need it. Very good. Any other discussion or questions? If I may, Mr. Chair, yes, so if somebody is willing to make a motion, the motion would be to approve a resolution extending the district for three years from 2039 to 2042. Mr. Chair. I would make a motion to what Chad just said. Thank you very much, and Roy. This is Roberta, and I will second. Thank you for that second. We have a motion on the floor under discussion. Roger. I, I was going to make the motion, oh, so I, okay. to the point of uh, improving the uh, uh, the bonding, when the county bonds all of the municipalities and school districts are considered as we bond, because that's all part of the taxing districts within the county, so it's beneficial for the county as well. Very good. Any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next item is the motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for coming in, Roger. Yep.